My name is Renee Maloney. I was 21 when I found out I was BRCA2 positive. Being BRCA2 positive, you have a lifetime risk of breast cancer at 55%. I spent the last 15 years screening for cancer. I would have mammograms and breast MRIs every six months, basically forever. That led me to the decision to have a prophylactic mastectomy at UT Southwestern. Dr. Farr and I actually clicked more than I have with any other doctor. She really just made me feel at ease. Renee has two small kids and she wanted to be very proactive, so she decided to look into prophylactic surgery, which is removing the breast tissue before it has the opportunity to form a cancer. One of the benefits of UT Southwestern is the access to clinical trials and emerging technology. Dr. Farr presented me with an option for a robotic mastectomy. The idea for the robotic nipple sparing mastectomy had been sort of a confluence of a lot of different things. When I started looking into other places in the world that had done this, there were some data that not only is there great cosmesis because the incision is smaller, but also there is the chance for possible improved sensation just because there is less potential damage to the tissues that remain. With the robotic incision, it's much smaller and it's a little bit more remote incision. But the game changer is if we can maintain sensation, that's the number one negative of a mastectomy for many patients. We were the first in the country to do this procedure with this robot. The amount of preparation that we had done encompassed over two years. We created a clinical trial that was approved by our IRB at UT Southwestern. UT Southwestern has funded all of this. It was also very supportive in sending myself and Dr. Haddock to Italy so that we could train and figure out the best way to do this for our patients. Once we had everything ironed out and it was safe, we approached Renee to be the first patient. Dr. Farr wanted to make sure that I was comfortable with the idea of the robotic mastectomy and she suggested that I sit with that information for just a little bit and also meet with her counterpart, Dr. Haddock, who is the plastic surgeon. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is reconstruct the breast in a way that the patient either feels like they never lost their breast or even in some situations we can improve the shape. When you present someone with an option that has never been done, you have to have the right person to say yes and move forward, and she was game on right away. The morning of the surgery, everything was set up so that we would have the best shot at giving her the best first procedure. The robotic mastectomy was just about under six hours. Dr. Farr starts on the robotic aspect, so she's working in the back on the robot, and I'm actually scrubbed in at the field and helping her know the borders of the breast. We take the breast tissue off of the underlying pectoralis muscle, and then Dr. Haddock comes in and puts in a tissue expander into that space to start the reconstruction process. We can put in an implant immediately, so that's certainly one option with these robotic reconstructions. But if a patient wants any increase in size or potentially change in shape, then what we place is a tissue expander. That expander, we can make it larger, we can take solution out to make it smaller, so that later he can come in and put in an implant. When I saw my breasts for the first time, I was pumped. I mean, they looked, it was weird. They looked the exact same. I was so pleased with the results. I was like screaming and telling everybody to come, come and check these out, you know? After surgery, they have no further breast tissue, but they still have this high-risk mutation. Her risk for breast cancer at this point is about two to 5%. The preliminary data that we have is that 88% of women have retained sensation which traditionally is not an option. I had my post-op appointment with Dr. Farr. We just hugged each other. The, the minute I saw her, I just gave her a hug and she told me, I said, yeah, you had goggle marks on your face. I remember seeing in the hospital that morning. She told me later that she had been like up practicing for hours. It brought a lot more human element to it to know that your doctors care about this as much as you do. I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity that I was able to even have this surgery. I'm very happy with the outcome, and I would recommend it for others. We're so grateful for her being the first patient and trusting us with this idea that has turned into something that we think is really beneficial to patients. I hope that she lives a long life with her children and her family, and she never has to worry about cancer again.